Right now, on to the point. The death toll rising. More than one million without power as heavy rain, flooding, and mudslides slam California. The typically dry rivers raging. More than 140 trees falling in Sacramento. And in the Sierra, snow dumping, making driving near impossible. Good evening, this is To The Point, and I'm Alex Bell. First tonight, we are continuing to follow the aftermath of a historic, deadly storm hitting California. We have crews here locally and in Southern California tracking all that damage. And take a look at some of the video we've gotten in from across the state. In our area, strong winds knocked down more than 140 trees, damaging homes, cars, and buildings. And then in Southern California, rain has caused life-threatening flash flooding and mudslides. At this hour, millions of people remain under flood alerts. Others are still without power. And right now we know at least two people have died in the storm in Carmichael. A tree fell on top of a 41 year old man killing him. And our Jeannie Nguyen is live in Sacramento right now with a look at the latest conditions. Good evening, Jeannie. Alex, you know, it doesn't take long to drive around Sacramento County to find some damages. Just take a look behind me here. This is in downtown Sacramento. We're in a parking lot. This large tree has clearly uh, toppled over. Roots are exposed. You can even see the concrete. It looks like it's newly paved, also cracked. The curb has also come up and you know this is causing a lot of issues and even a death investigation within the county. And today, too, a lot of businesses are left cleaning and dealing with the damage. It's an iconic staple along Broadway. People know of Pancake Circus for a long, long time. But the restaurant's retro sign took a hit following high winds from last night's storm. This morning I came and see the damage, so I was all like, oh my God, this is this sign been here for since 1968. This sign, one of the many things damaged in Sacramento County. County officials reports 145 downed trees, many of them in Carmichael. County officials say one tree killed 41-year-old Chad Enzi at his home. His family did not want to talk, but his girlfriend told ABC10 it happened in the backyard and crews are working to clean the mess. It's something county crews are also doing today. Crews have been working since last night into the this morning, uh, trying to clear out the trees to make sure that people on the roads have uh, a place uh, to drive safely. At the storm's peak, SMUD officials say about 200,000 customers lost power. Crews are working around the clock to try and restore that power to everyone as soon as possible. SMUD starts with those outages that pose a public safety risk first and then moves on to the large widespread outages, considering hospitals, flood pumps and facilities with large community impact before it moves on to the smaller scattered outages. Adding that the high winds did cause a delay in response times. There were moments during these powerful winds where crews needed to kind of hold back a little bit on their work in order to work safely. As county and SMUD crews continue to work to get things fixed, they're urging everyone to remain patient. Now, Governor Gavin Newsom did announce a state of emergency in Southern California. However, here in Sacramento County, officials say that is not the case, but they will continue to monitor this storm. Alex, back to you. All right, Jeannie, thank you so much. In Yuba City, an 82-year-old man was killed by a tree. Yuba City police say they found David Gomez lying underneath a tree when they arrived at his home on Tres Picos Drive. We spoke with neighbors who say the storm was one of the worst that they've experienced in years. 76 years old and you know you're always concerned and then something like that happens just out of nowhere it's pretty tragic really is tragic and i'm sure his family's as heartbroken as they can be and we tried to reach out to the gomez family but understandably they were not ready to talk and tonight thousands of families are still without power this is a look at smud and pg and e's outage maps right now both companies are reporting more than 20,000 customers are without power at this hour they say it's because strong winds damaged power lines and tore down a bunch of trees yesterday abc 10's candace red is in rockland to check out the cleanup process we were just hoping it wouldn't hit any cars strong winds uprooted trees yesterday in Rockland, including this one in front of Susan McQueen's house near Cedar and High Streets. It's been there as long as I've been here and um, I thought about taking it out a couple of times. Susan used the camera on her cell phone to capture this moment of the tall tree falling. She says neighbors helped with the cleanup. Nobody got hurt and I got to know some of my neighbors that I'd never met before. They showed up with chainsaws. Susan says 
her power went out at home too because of the storm. All things considered, I came out pretty lucky. Elsewhere in Placer County, PG&E is working to restore power for thousands of customers. More than 3,000 of my coworkers are out in force working to assess the damage and make the necessary repairs. PG&E is getting help from out-of-state crews and other utility companies to get the job done. The winds were terrible. Lois Watts lives next to Susan and says she waited about 12 hours for her lights to come back on at home. I wasn't ready and prepared. I always got flashlights somewhere in the house. Just watching a, a series on TV and then it went kaput. In times like this, Susan says, neighbors help neighbors. And I just, I don't want to leave my neighborhood. Those neighbors are fantastic. Those neighbors have been fantastic. I mean, it's just a great little spot. All right, and pg &E says that it's difficult to estimate when the power will be restored because of the extensive storm damage, but you can stay updated by looking at outage maps, or you can always go to our website, abc10.com. And we want to go ahead and bring in meteorologist Brandon Minchef now. Brandon, can you explain the impact of the storm to our area? Yeah, I mean, I think really it starts and ends with the wind yeah. because some of us saw more rain than others, but certainly we all got in on the wind. Take a look at some of these max wind gusts that we saw yesterday. I included Point Reyes on here. Uh, I know it's out along the coast, but they recorded a 90 mile per hour wind gust yesterday. But Mather in town, 68 miles per hour. Just This was about this time yesterday that we were seeing uh, these 65 to 70 mile per hour wind gust. McClellan 66, Placerville 64, International Airport 63, 60, Sacramento Executive 60 in Stockton. I mean, these areas are, you know, at the airports, but a lot of these are in town near where a lot of us live. Uh, Travis Air Force Base 59, Modesto 55, Davis 47 mile per hour wind gusts. Check this out though, up in the Sierra, 142 mile per hour wind gusts recorded Palisades, Tahoe, Ward Peak, Siberia, also Palisades, 122 mile per hour wind gusts, 106 at Kirkwood, Angora Ridge and Myers, 76 mile per hour wind gusts and Tahoe Donner, 61. It was a windy day to say the very least about yesterday, but that's not the only impact from the system. This is a 36 hour radar loop. Look at all the rain pouring into Southern California. They've got massive flooding problems down there, Alex. Thank you so much. Of course, we'll have your full forecast right after the break. But in Southern California, a state of emergency has been issued for at least eight counties. Santa Barbara's airport was shut down last night after being inundated with water. I mean, other areas are seeing mudslides and flash floods. Brian White from our sister station in San Diego has more tonight on these flood concerns. Yes, Alex, I've seen a steady stream of rain throughout the day here in Encinitas. Now, people and businesses in low-lying areas have made lots of preparations, sandbags and flood barriers and things like that. But they're on edge. They're just hoping this rain doesn't bring more flooding. It's definitely been crazy over here. We're not used to rain like this, so it's definitely been a lot more intense. More rain falling in Encinitas today. City crews monitoring storm drains and pump stations. People apprehensive with all the rain we've been getting. I mean, it's insane. This is probably the, maybe the second, third, you know, big storm that we've had this year. So just crossing our fingers and hoping it's going to work out. Two weeks ago, low-lying streets and alleys like this one near Coast Highway in Europa saw several feet of water. It was horrific. This was We were underwater right where we're standing right now. It was uh, pretty torrential. It was definitely just driving up and down the street, uh, just a lot of flooding. This video was taken at the Mud House, a ceramic art studio that was completely flooded. It's hard to know when it's going to happen and what we can do to prevent it and what we can't, so I'm just taking all measures possible. Emma Storm Sabo is owner of the mud house. Since it flooded, she and her team have lined the building with sandbags. So far, it seems okay. Um, it really could change at any moment, so I'm just kind of nervously <laughs> anticipating a flood. She showed me inside her studio where they've cut out portions of the drywall. This is a dehumidifier that um, Pacific Flood Restoration brought for us, and it's been going for about a, a little over a week. She's going on her third week of the studio being closed for repairs, and she says it's isolating. It's really heartbreaking. The thing I miss the most is the community and just the people that I see every day that come in here and just bring the energy to the studio that makes it what it is. Meanwhile, as the rain continues to fall, people living around here remain anxious. You know, now it's a bit of a panic. Yeah, so when it rains, everyone starts kind of wondering, you know, how bad is it going to be? Um, and, you know, you see the damage. It's, uh, you know, palpable. 
Unbelievable images coming out of Southern California. All right, we've got to take a quick break, but next on to the point, protecting your home after the storms. We ask an insurance expert what you can do. Plus, we are one month away from California's primary election. Tonight, Sacramento mayoral candidates address the homelessness crisis. Welcome back. We are continuing to track the aftermath of that historic storm. I know this morning I woke up and my fence was just completely torn apart. The wind got to it last night during the storm. But I'm sure like many of you at home, the first thing I asked myself is, is this covered by my homeowner's insurance? So today State Farm told me that they have received about 1,900 claims over the last several days. A majority of those claims are in the Sacramento area and are wind and tree related. They offered this advice. If your neighbor's tree falls on your home, um, you are responsible for it as the homeowner, um, unless you can prove that, you know, there was uh, the tree was dead or, you know, neglected before the storm, it would be your responsibility and your homeowners would cover that. State Farm says if you have to hire a company to remove the tree from your property, make sure the company is licensed and bonded, document your damage and keep your receipts. And we've been talking a lot about rain and wind, but we are also getting a lot of snow with this latest storm. The CHP is working in these conditions, an I-80 on Truckee today. You can see officers helping a truck move up the hill and clearing the road on the path, the path on the road, excuse me, I was trying to look at the video, but we have meteorologist <laughs> Brendan Minchev joining me now. What else are we expecting in terms of storms this week? Is it over yet? Uh, for the most part, yeah, we're okay. pretty much done. Uh, there's a chance for some showers overnight, but really the snow is going to continue overnight. And for that reason, because it's still snowing and with the snow we've already seen, we do have some active chain controls on both I-80 and US-50. We saw the chains briefly be lifted on 50, and they've since come back within the last hour. Here's a look at radar. Things are a lot quieter up here in Northern California. Like we talked about though, before the break, uh, the rain down in Southern California is the real deal and that'll continue uh, through tomorrow as well. Uh, but things are tapering off up here. One of the things we're watching for some scattered showers through the rest of the evening, potentially a thunderstorm or two, but I think the thunderstorm potential is kind of wearing away at this point. But that snow will continue through the overnight hours and won't taper off until we get closer to sunrise tomorrow. So still not a good time to go up to the Sierra. Wait until the sun rises tomorrow uh, before you go up and try to play in the snow. Uh, storms again possible through the evening tonight. Primary threat would be some brief heavy rain and some strong thunderstorm wind gusts. That would be uh, about it there. Through a future cast, there's not that much in the valley, just a few pop up showers. But again, by sunrise tomorrow, that snow tapers off in the Sierra. Maybe a few showers, maybe predominantly some rain showers in the mid elevations tomorrow. But in the valley, we're likely to stay dry and even see some sunshine by the time we get to tomorrow evening. So if you're waking up early Tuesday morning, Lows are going to be in those mid 40s coming up to 50 degrees and then going through the day tomorrow again clouds to start less clouds later on the rain chance goes away as well working through the afternoon and evening on Tuesday some highs around the region close to 60 degrees partly cloudy skies and we get even warmer and dry out as we get towards Valentine's Day. All right, Brendan, thank you. Next on to the point, we sit down with Sacramento mayoral candidates about what they would do to address the homeless crisis. Plus a new billion dollar border bill on Capitol Hill, what the money will go to. Now to the 2024 elections today, county election officials started mailing out ballots for California's primary election on March 5th. Right now, offices are busy preparing for voters by running accuracy tests and putting sample ballots through tabulators to make sure every vote is counted. And starting tomorrow, ballot drop boxes, they will be open for those who are very eager to turn in their ballots. If you have not yet registered to vote, you have until February 20th to do so. Again, February 20th. And one thing on the ballot for the March 5th primary will be voting for Sacramento's next mayor. Six candidates are running, and current mayor Daryl Steinberg is not seeking re-election. And unless one candidate gets more than 50% of the vote, the top two vote-getters will advance to the general election in November. Becca Habegger spoke with all six candidates, and tonight we hear their thoughts on the homelessness crisis. Six Sacramento mayoral candidates qualified for the March 5th ballot. Jose Antonio Avina II is a captain in the U.S. Marine Corps and personal trainer. Dr. Flo Kofer is an epidemiologist, a public health professional, and has served on various city and county committees and boards. Julius Engel is an asset protection manager. He previously worked as an attorney but was disbarred in 2020 for professional misconduct, including failing to perform with competence and unauthorized practice of law. Steve Hansen is a small business owner and former Sacramento City Council 
council member, representing the Central City and Land Park for two terms before current council member Katie Valenzuela defeated him. Kevin McCarty is a state assembly member representing Sacramento, a position he has held for nearly a decade. Prior to that, he spent about 10 years serving as a Sacramento City Council member. Dr. Richard Pan is a pediatrician, educator, small business owner, and former state senator and assembly member, representing the Sacramento area until 2022 when he hit the maximum term limit for a state lawmaker. Voters and ABC 10 have asked them what they would do as mayor to address the homelessness crisis. We need to be able to set up safe ground all around town where people can ha have some temporary shelter and also a place to be able to triage and get them into additional services they may need. And then we need to find some of the low cost options to be able to A, keep people housed. We also need to make sure we can get people into some of the housing that's available, whether that's helping with down payments or whether that's turning some of our local hotels and motels where people are going for a few days already into long-term shelter. We have to be compassionate and coordinate with the county or social service providers and everyone else. But we also have to be firm and enforce the law. Drug dealing, stealing, hurting other people is not okay in our city. And I was a kid who was homeless on and off for a period of time. I saw a lot of adversity. And so I know that we can do both. But we have to show our neighborhoods that we care about them just as much as we're trying to help people who are less fortunate. We need to have more uh, temporary shelter sites like at Cal Expo where I wrote a law having you know tiny homes there or you know the city courtyards or under Caltrans facilities. You know, we need to get people off the streets today. It may not be a perfect solution, but I'm looking for practical solutions where people can have water and bathrooms and trash cans and some services and then we focus on our permanent solutions. We need to first be sure people who are at risk of being unhoused or who have recently become homeless, get them housed quickly. The, those are the folks who are actually going to be the easiest to approach. But for them to succeed, we have to be sure we provide them the supports they need. That includes mental health, substance use, help. Now, those are actually funded by the county. Uh, so that we need the county and the city to work together in making that happen. We pay so much in taxes and we're wondering what is going on? Like, where is that money going to? I blame those in charge and I want to hold them accountable. If you are down in your luck, come here and we will take care of you. We will do everything in our power to make sure that you have a house, you have food, and then you have uh, clothing, and then you have an ability to get back in there into the community and work again. Now we have District Attorney Ho, who I didn't support at first, but I do now because he's performing, he's doing things. Okay, and uh, Jimmy Cooper, the sheriff. Yeah, I remember I always supported him. You like me, Mayor, that's a triad. The three of us of the same mind, I will join Ho and Cooper to resolve that problem. And we want to help you feel informed and confident as you vote for the next mayor of Sacramento. So over the next two nights, we will hear from all six candidates on other important topics, including crime and affordable housing. So make sure you stay with us. In other news tonight, there is a new border security package on Capitol Hill. It's the most significant immigration deal reached by Democrats and Republicans in more than a decade. $118 billion package includes a $20 billion for border security, including shutting down the border when migrant encounters reach 5,000 a day and accelerating the process for deportations. It also includes new foreign aid, $60 billion in additional funding for Ukraine, $14 billion for Israel, and $10 billion in humanitarian assistance in both the Middle East and Ukraine. And a key test vote in the Senate is expected this Wednesday. The Buckingham Palace has announced that King Charles III has cancer, and it comes less than 18 months into his reign. The 75-year-old monarch says that he suspended public duties but will continue with state business. The palace has not yet said what form of cancer the king has, but says it is not related to his recent treatment for a benign prostate condition. Next, on to the point. A Sacramento native takes home an honor at the Grammys. All right, it was very exciting at the Grammys last night for a Sacramento native, Victoria Monet. The singer-songwriter took home the new Best Artist Award. In her speech, she said the award represented a 15-year pursuit, saying, quote, my roots have been growing underneath ground, unseen for so long, and I feel like today I'm sprouting, end quote. She also had seven other nominations, tying for the second most nominated artist, of the night and check this out warner brothers movie crews were seen in stockton today several trucks were lined up at main and san joaquin streets near the courthouse we have yet to receive details about what the new movie is about but warner brothers was also filming in downtown sacramento on saturday
All right, very cool. And before we go, we want to mention that we are connecting you with our local election coverage all month long. So if there is something that you would like to ask our local lawmakers, make sure that you shoot me an email at to the point at abc10.com. Have a great night, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone, and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com, or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.